and welcome to another episode of Motors for the Masses. Now, when you're looking for another car, what's your budget? A thousand pounds? Two thousand pounds? Maybe it's somewhere in the middle. So what can you get for fifteen hundred pounds these days? You could get something like a Super Mini, something like a Citroen C1. Now, personally I'm not a fan of those, they're very small, something like the Citroen or the Peugeot equivalent. You're looking at um, a 2006, 2007 version with low mileage for that kind of price. If you want to go maybe a little bit higher mileage, you can get something 2008, 2009. But it has a one litre three cylinder engine. Nought to 60 is 15 seconds. It's a glorified shopping trolley. But it does have very low emissions at just 95 CO2s, which means you're paying nothing for tax. So you could go down that route, but why would you? I mean, let's be honest, it's okay for taking the children to school in, but anybody over the age of five would just be far too embarrassed to get in it. So that's out. But what if you fancy something sportier? Well, you could go for this 2003 Renault Clio Cup. Now this car has 172 brake horsepower and a 0 to 60 time of, well, let's find out, shall we? Three, two, one, go. Stop. So in the real world, this car did a 0 to 60 in 9.2 seconds. So there you have it. Now, this engine does develop 194 CO2s, which means that the tax is gonna come out rather high at 270 pounds a year. But, if you want a sporty shopping trolley, in fact, no, that's unfair. It's more of a go-kart than a shopping trolley. It is fun to drive, it's sporty, it's lowered, it's got the nice sporty alloys. This one has an aftermarket exhaust, so it's a little bit raspy. So what is giving you those 172 horses? This two litre 16 valve engine. Inside you do have these nice comfortable padded seats with Renault Sport written on the side. In the back you still have room for the young ones, or even adults. In fact, let's find that out, shall we? I am an adult, and I am in the back. When you're driving it, it does feel quite sporty. The seats really hug you quite nicely, and the steering wheel is pretty responsive, actually. It's, um, it's not woolly and floppy. It's actually, you turn it, you turn. Although, one thing that worries me about this car is that when I drive it, I feel as though I should be either dressed like this, maybe having some kind of chewing gum on the go so that everybody can see, or even like this. But then if I do that, I feel as though I need to adopt a Mancunian accent, innit? Like, yeah, sorted, yeah, like it. But I am on rails as I go around corner. Not quite sure what accent that was. It does turn quite well. Going into Yorkshire now. <laughs> Sorry about the accent, not quite sure what's going on there. Or, as I have one, maybe I could put my hood up. Sit behind a wheel like that. Alright. Don't mess with me. But it's 172 or 180 brake horsepower. It does give a little bit of punch. Not a huge amount of punch, but a little bit of punch. If you want something that is sporty, but you can still ferry the children around in and still do your shopping in, £1,500 will get you this nice little number. Maybe you want something more family orientated. Three kids shopping in the back. This 2001-2002 Audi A4, with 80,000 miles on the clock, can see you on the road within your budget. 
This comes with a 1.9 turbo diesel intercooler engine. Now, brake horsepower in something like this is irrelevant. It doesn't really matter how much brake horsepower it's got. 0 to 60 in some seconds. What's more important is that you're getting a decent sized family car for your money. Now one thing that is important is that it does develop 151 CO2s, which means your car tax is going to be £185 a year. Well inside this already feels very different to drive. Uh, you can definitely tell the quality of German engineering over the French. It's much smoother, even though it's a diesel, the clutch control is very nice, it's very light, the gears are nice, you know, they go in and out very easily. You get a nicer sounding tick even from the uh, indicators. Now this is an older car than the Renault, but it feels more family orientated. Now I know obviously because it's bigger and it has bigger seats in the back, but it just feels more comfortable to drive as though you could go out in the family and not race down to the shops, run in, grab your milk, race back home again like you could at the Renault. Now don't get me wrong, it's not the most luxurious of places to be. You do have electric windows. You do have some air that blows around, but it's not overly equipped, shall we say. You know, obviously, you know, you've got cruise control, but you don't have aircon. But in England, how often do you really need aircon? Just look at a window. But the best thing about it is that when you're sitting in this seat, looking out of that window, you don't feel as though you're in a 2002 car. You feel as though you are in something that is reliable, that is quite nippy, and is gonna get you there pretty safely. And what more do you want for 1,500 quid? Okay, I understand this is not a car, but if you wanna transport a bed or a wardrobe or a small Indian elephant, you could get yourself something like this, the VW Transporter Van. Now this is a 1996 model, which means incidentally that the tax is only £235 a year, because it doesn't come into all those silly CO2 rules. They do hold their money quite well, so £1,500 is going to get you a basic base model. That's where they start from, but you can get them if you shop around. This one's been mottled with black stuff and it has wheels. What else can I say? It's a van. You can transport stuff in it. It's slow. It has a 1.9 non-turbo diesel engine. And the 0 to 60 time is find out. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, go! Ten. Ten miles an hour. Twenty miles an hour. Twenty-five miles an hour. Thirty miles an hour. Thirty-six miles an hour. Fourth gear is a struggle. 41, 42, 45. We're at 50. No, we're not. Back down to 48. 50. just have to transport stuff in them. A lot of people take these and turn them into campers. They put beds in the back, they put cabinets, they put um, a stove and they go on holiday in it. It's perfect for that. It might be slow but when you're transporting a home in the back you don't need anything fast.
Okay, so what can I say about the inside of this? It's a van. It has windy windows. Which seems to take an age to get up. It has optional extra on this one, the, um, the bendy rubber from the steering wheel where it's come loose inside. Oh, not fast enough to make the lights. Oh, brake. It has brakes. Somewhere underneath my foot lies a brake. It's not very effective, but it is a brake. And we're off. Foot down. Into second. I feel as though when driving one of these, the window should be down and we should be going. All right, darling. Show us your. But of course, being a gentleman, I don't do that kind of thing. The speedo tells us that we're doing around 33 miles an hour. It was waving at me. And there's a light on. So let's say you want to combine all of those. You want something that's sporty. You want something that you can put the family in and get the shopping in. And you want something that you can put a wardrobe in the back if need be. You could go for this. This is a 2007 Ford S-Max. This car comes with a two litre, 128 brake horsepower engine. It's not that powerful, but the different variations of this engine do go all the way up to 160 brake horsepower. They also do this in a 2.2 and a 2.5. So the options are there to be sporty, but this is ideal for the family. Now this particular car has the 128 brake horsepower engine, which develops 169 CO2s, which means you are going to be paying £210 a year for tax. However, it comes with seven seats. You do have steel wheels, there's no alloys on this one, but you can get alloys for it. And that means if you fold these seats away, you've got plenty of room in the back. Let's have a look. So once you open the boot, you do have quite a large space to put your shopping and extra room in the floor. The seats this third row of seats are very easy to manoeuvre. Basically you just lift this flap, pull on this red tag, and that's it. It folds down. Once you push these other seats back, you've got quite a huge boot. So once you've got these back seats down, you can pull on this little red lever in the middle to pull the middle one down. Pull the back here to either go forward or backwards with the seats, or Pull the handle and go all the way down apparently. We'll leave that for now. Oh, on this side, <laughs> pull the handle once to go forwards, pull the handle twice to go all the way down. Then you just lift these over and you've got a nice big boot. So to test the space we have, uh, I'm gonna get in like so. I can lay down, my hand touches this, and I'm comfortably in the car. Loads of space, I could get a double bed in the back of here. Inside, this is a very comfortable vehicle. You don't feel as though you're sitting inside an MPV. You feel as though you're sitting inside a car. It's spacious. You've got a massive windscreen to see out of. The only thing I don't like is that these pillars are huge and they're right in the corner of the windscreen. So when you're going around a corner, I mean you do have these side windows, but when you're going around a corner, it can get in the way and you find yourself doing a little bit of this. But other than that, it's not that bad. I'm very surprised. A lot of MPVs that you drive tend to be very van-like and very 
you know you're in an MPV, whereas this you just feel like you're in a car. It's very smooth to drive, it's uh, a six speed gearbox and you cruise along, you can't hear it, you can still hear it's a diesel but it's not a chuggy diesel. And with these front seats in a comfortable position, the rear passenger has a huge amount of legroom. I could sit on this seat here and still have enough to do a little jig in the back here with no issues. Now, with these seats all the way forward, you've got legroom in the back, but with this seat all the way back to have the room I just had, you can see here not even enough room to put a tiny child in. However, you roll the seats forward, like this, when I get in, like so, I've still got enough room. But the main thing is, I can now fit in the back. Although, my knees are up around my ears. The gearbox is very smooth, the clutch is very nice, very light. When you're driving it, the steering is very responsive. There's no wooliness, you know, it's a modern feel. You get electric windows, you get air conditioning, you get a nice simple console, a huge dashboard, a little tray on the front for you to store stuff in, you know, tray here for you to store stuff in, and you get that aeroplane style handbrake that you pull up and then push the button in and push down again. I'm impressed. Turbo diesel engine is a little bit lacking. There's not a great deal of torque, but you know, I mean, I'm doing 70 now. Oh, six gears, forgot about that. Doing 70 now, and it's very smooth. It got here okay. It didn't get here in lightning speeds, but it got here okay. Now, let's be honest, this is not the kind of car that you want to be doing drag racing in. It's not the kind of car that you want to be screeching around the corners because you're going to have your kids in the back. You're going to have a dog in the back. If you've got a dog, of course. So, for what it is, it's completely adequate. More than adequate. Now, let's not uh, insult the car, let's be honest. It's not, you know, you're not expecting it to be a lightning rod. But it's smooth, and that's what I'm impressed about the most. Driving down little country roads, it soaks up the bumps really well. Um, there's no rattles, there's no bangs, there's no issues. I, I can't really fault the drive. The only thing I would say is that I would hope it would have a little bit more punch. Now you can get different variations of this engine and you can get different variations of engine right up to two and a half litre. So there's going to be faster models. But, you know, for the average man in the street that just wants a wagon that's going to take you to and from school, to and from the supermarket, carry your kids nice and safely, this is absolutely perfect, you know, especially for the money. So there we have it. You're looking at spending 1,500 pounds. This is what you can get. Now the only thing you do have to be aware of is that this car has done 165,000 miles. Now, as long as it's got a full service history, mileage today doesn't really make a lot of difference. There are a couple of things though that I think this thing should have. There are no trays in the seats, so the passengers don't have anything to put anything anywhere. That's to me is a bit of a letdown. You can probably get those as an optional extra. The other thing I think it should have is maybe a DVD player. 
Now I'm sure you can pay extra for four to fit one or go the aftermarket route. Other than that, for a 2007 sporty looking MPV for £1,500. Now back in 2007, this car would have cost £24,500. If it was me, I would have paid a little bit extra, got the alloys and the extra bits inside. But other than that, I can't find anything to complain about. So it just goes to show, if you shop around for £1,500, you can get something pretty decent for your money. So that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back next time with another car. Until then, drive safely, but have fun. Thank you. Bye-bye.